So I've been running Linux on my desktop since around 2010, making about nine, you know, nine, almost 10 years of full-time Linux usage. Now, one of the things that a lot of people do is they talk about switching to Linux and then they go, but I can't run this or I can't run that. And gaming is one thing that I know some of the games, and this is one of the reasons I do have a Windows computer dedicated to gaming at home. Uh, mostly my kids use it occasionally. I play a couple games on there, but the valid reason they're coming light years ahead they've gotten way better but not every game works on linux yet so this is more about the creative workflow and uh chris from crosstalk solutions says tom has definitely great thing said great things about pop os and he is doing some investigating linux but he's got the but the adobe suite of products for my workflow so i can't switch for my own system and this is um not something I'm picking on Chris at all about. And because I want to point out something about statements like that, because they're very valid. Workflow is a huge problem. Uh, you take the time to learn, you get really good at a workflow, especially when in the case of me and Chris both, we have businesses to run. We are not uh, YouTubers full time. That isn't where our life is. Uh, and even then changing a workflow once you've created a workflow to make your living is difficult. When you do it as a side, you have to decide how much time do I want to dedicate to learning something new. So I do realize those challenges, but uh, I chose to not use the Adobe Suite of products for my workflow. I know there's a couple times I've had conversations. I remember Chris when he's talking about crashing problems with Adobe, and there's been a few people talked about some of the updates with it and dealing with Windows updates that they kind of wish they would have taken the time to run Linux. Uh, but I have taken the time, and I've put the time into it. So if I were to switch to Adobe, it'd be hard for me. So the opposite can be true as well. But I don't know a reason to switch to Adobe. Or, and someone's going to bring it up here, DaVinci, because I'm, uh, I'm aware of DaVinci. I know it exists, but I'm going to use the same excuse of I don't feel like changing my workflow because it really wouldn't add a lot to my day. Uh, so we're going to talk about the tools I use real quick right here in 2019. So I am using Pop! OS and the thumbnails that you see were created with GIMP. Now I come from a photography background. I was a long time intense Photoshop user, got quite good at it, but... Uh, I decided to put my nose to the grindstone, which means I just watched a whole lot of YouTube videos and uh, learned how different functions work in GIMP. There's some great tutorials out there. I can't name each person because it's not like I watched one channel, but if you search, you'll figure them out pretty quickly because uh, there's going to be always new people out there. You can do the majority of the Photoshop functions, but no matter what, I got to admit, GIMP seems to have a few extra steps or things uh, that you didn't have in Photoshop. So Photoshop is nicer than GIMP, but for a workflow, GIMP works great. Being able to create these thumbnails, being able to create transparencies and stuff like that. And I want to break down a myth real quick here uh, about something that, well, I, maybe a myth. I've seen people say it doesn't work that way, but it does. So here's a quick Google image search for Linux. And what I'm doing here, we're going to change it to transparent. And the reason I'm doing it, let's find a transparent tux. There we go. Whoops. Was, uh, I only want the image, open image, new tab, copy image. Paste it as a new layer. I'll resize it real quick. Oops. Uh, wrong tool. But you can see, I can grab an image off the internet, off the web, copy, paste, the clipboard works fine. Uh, so still not Adobe, but it, those functions that you can do in Windows where you can grab things and not have to like save the file, add the file, go through that. You can quickly produce things and edit here. Um, and then, you know, it's layer space. So if I want it on the top layer, so it goes over this, I can just do that. And now we've added a penguin to this. So it's not like you're this myth that there's constant command lines or that copy and paste doesn't work the same. No, actually it does. It works uh, much the same. You can handle copy paste and ed easily edit and change things and you know move things around. Grab I grab this logo uh, off their website and just paste it in here and away we go. So we won't. We're going to discard those changes real quick. And then Caden Live for all the video editing. So video editing uh, has come a long way. Caden Live. Uh, if you've tried it before, you can go 
didn't it crash all the time? It sure did. Um, you Every edit almost came with every minor change was control S, control S to keep saving. Because, uh, yeah, it seemed to crash quite a bit. They have come a long, long ways. I've donated to this project many times. Uh, so it is how I edit all my videos. The only thing, and if anyone's ever wondering how I do these titles where it says large systems, third-party renders, uh, the titling sucks in Caden Live to this day is not wonderful. You can do uh, PNGs and transparencies, but I do them all um, separately in different things. Uh, the, the titling is the one thing I really wish was better. This is the title editor in Caden Live, and so yeah, um, I'm, I'm always looking. If someone has a great title editing that's open source besides Blender, yes, I know you can create all kinds of awesome 3D animations in Blender, but boy, Blender is really difficult to use, so uh, I don't got time to learn that. But so Caden Live for my video editing still works great, and this is you know my go-to for the video editing. Now video acquisition is right here, uh, OBS Studio. I think Chris even uses this. OBS is actually cross-platform, runs great on Windows and Linux. I love the inception view that you get when it does it like this. Uh, but this is where I'm recording right now. So this is how I acquire these videos when I'm doing screen captures. And then for everything else, let me flip to the other screens. I'm just right here inside of the you know file manager, GNOME file manager. This is Pop OS, so it's the Pop OS file manager. Uh, and this is a card reader to pull cards out of the camera, and you can just drag and drop videos in. Uh, yeah, it's not a remove. It just warned me it's not a removable de device. Generally speaking, I don't edit right off the card. Um, that's why I didn't see that error. I had to take a second to read it. So I don't usually edit right off the card, but. Um, this allows you to, like I said, just drag and drop the videos. I usually, and these are Windows mounts, if you want to say that. Uh, it's a Samba mount, to be technically correct. Um, but in GNOME, in the GNOME file manager, in Pop, the one that comes with Pop OS here, you just type SMB colon slash slash and the, I, well, I'm using IP. I know I could be using uh, UNC names, but it, it's just the same as it does in Windows. I can mount and save things to these Windows shares, Samba shares on my FreeNAS. Uh, and my FreeNAS is connected at 10 gig between my computer and this, so it's no problem for me to edit across these. And what I, my general workflow is, you know, copy the card cameras, uh, copy the cards, drop them into here, and you can see all these lists of videos in here. Getting clients in 2019. Hey, there's the video for it. And it's going to import the clips and put it together. So pretty, pretty straightforward how all this works. You know, this is... Fairly easy, drag and drop, pull things in, pull these videos in, uh, and away you go. So it's not like it's I'm doing all this command line magic and it's really hard to do inside of Linux. It's come a long way. It's become quite easy to do. I just wanted to highlight that if you take the time and you want to put the time into changing your workflow, you have to have the time and say, I'm going to make the time to do it, but it can be done. And like I said, all these are absolutely available in the Papa Wish store. So let me pull up the Pop Shop. And, you know, no magic to install these. I just type in Caden Live. Hey, look, it's installed. Uh, then you type in GIMP. And there's GIMP. And then I don't remember, though, if OBS. I think OBS, you might have to uh, load third party. Yeah, the only thing. Oh, no, OBS I, is. There we go. OBS was installed from here as well. Um, I do take and change repositories for OBS so I can get a more up-to-date version on there. Uh, that's the only thing I did do differently as far as that. But once again, not hard to do. They have a download on their website, so you can do that. But uh, like I said, hopefully this is going to get you an idea. I, I'm not going to tell you that these are drop-in replacements. They're not absolutely feature parity equivalent. You just have to learn something new. No, you have to learn something new, and you have to decide if those features in Adobe Premiere are ones you really use. Now, I've produced over 700 videos and uploaded them to my YouTube channel here as of uh, April of 2019. And so I can tell you that they work. I can tell you that this workflow works for me and it's made my uh, the channel what it is today. So I'm really happy with it. I don't really have any plans on changing because like I said, I'm really, you know, matter of fact, this version I'm testing right here is a slightly newer version. If you notice how it may look a little bit different if you're running Caden Live, uh, they just released this on Thursday. It's a new refactored code version I'm testing out. So um, it's it's so far it hasn't crashed, <laughs> so uh, that's good. The the other one's pretty stable. The uh, standard one that you just load out of Pop OS it has been quite stable for me and works very well. So these are tools you can use. They are out there if you want to take the time to learn them. All right, thanks.
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.